It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. This program is a Duad's collaboration with Purple Radio. Content warnings may be found in the episode description. Duad's presents The Three Musketeers Episode 6 of Traitors and Lovers This episode is dedicated to John Van Stan of Savannah, Georgia. With his disgust, and it says, No one else is singing along. Well played, Grimo, well played. You know, I disapprove of the song, but the wording. It's very. Clever. Communion. Communion. Kneeling for communion. (laughs) Ah, young Aramis, when sober, so eloquent, but when inebriated, so base. Young Aramis? You haven't called me that in weeks. D'Artagnan is just across from me, and he's still a teacher. (sighs) What? Red as a beat and you won't say anything. By God, you are a poor Gascon indeed if you have no spine. Aramis, calm yourself. You've had a little too much to drink. Me? I've had too much to drink, Athos. (laughs) Monsieur Aramis is right. I don't wish to offend any of you the way I did when we first met. (laughs) A fine excuse for your cowardice. But your (laughs) ass-kicking... Your ass-kissing still offends me. (sighs) Then, Monsieur Aramis, should we take a walk alone together? Then we may see who the real coward is. Gentlemen. What are we going to do with all the king's pistoles? I'm thinking of purchasing a new doublet myself. I'd say it complicates my figure. Contemplates my figure? Uh, compliments your figure. <laughs> oh, it does. Thank you, Habibi. It'd only be fitting to take a share earned through luck to the game table. And you, boy. I'm not quite sure. If you were in my position, what- No, Blue! Could you not develop an opinion by yourself for once? Ah, oh, don't mind him. He's jealous now that he has competition. Order a hearty repast at the Pomme de Pan. Their veal is the best in the city. They stock only the finest wines. And you're a growing boy. Oh, come on. Take your pistoles and get yourself a, a mistress. Perhaps she'll give you experience. I thought you wanted to take orders as a priest. I abstain from earthly pleasures so that people like you do not have to. No one believes you, Aramis. Perhaps it's time you engage a lackey, kid. Maybe. But I wouldn't know a good lackey if one bit me on the bottom. They would not be a good lackey if they did. (coughs) Quiet, Grimo. Perhaps you could tell me what to look for in a lackey. Better yet, we'll help you find one in the morrow. Oh, my apologies. I am occupied. And I am indisposed. Well then, D'Artagnan, it shall be you and I, bright and early. And that is my cue to bid you all a good night. I have a rendezvous of the utmost importance. Aramis, you've barely touched your food. Porthos can finish my chicken, and you, Athos, finish this lovely bottle from the law. Bonsoir, gentlemen.
Does he often leave like this? Aramis takes his religious studies very seriously. He does study something, but <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with religion. Speculation, Porthos. I'm certain that his moans and groans over the works of Godfrey de Fontaine and Thomas Aquinas are all genuine. And I'm sure all those that pass by his window on the Rue de Vaugirard hear his enthusiasm every night. D'Artagnan? Yes, please. There was still that much left? He barely had any. Hmm. <laughs> Lightweight. So, D'Artagnan, how's the commission going with Dessessar's company? Oh, it's all right. Have you made any new friends? Not yet. Well, why not? It's nothing to trouble yourself over. Francoise stops by sometimes on an inspection. Why are you all looking at me like that? One for all, all for one. I thought you musketeers didn't go by that anymore. We are not just any musketeers. We want to make sure you're all right. It's nothing. <laughs> My father is a cardinalist to the core. Dessessart's men are not. They say the apple never falls far from the tree, that village types lick the cardinal's boot. You've proved well enough you'd do no such thing. But if I had not met you, perhaps I would be collecting a commission from his eminence. <laughs> it will pass. I just feel too different from them. You feel foreign to it, but you'll settle in yet. I've already been with them a few days. Now let's talk about something else. You're right. D'Artagnan, would you like to learn how to flirt in Spanish? Uh. Repeat after me. Mi aliento huele a culo de mula. 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 <laughs> oh. My head still hurts from last night, but I remember you saying that we were going to find a lucky in the morning. Indeed we are. At a cloth fair. Do you have a sample of merino wool? Oh, this will take just a moment. Mousqueton has insisted that my fine breeches with the golden brocade are wearing thin, and I must purchase cloth for a new set. How about this colour? I think the blue would suit your complexion better. I mean, that's what I've heard my mother say. It sounds silly. Don't be ashamed. Foolish is a man who thinks he has nothing to learn from a woman. How much for the blue? Surely not. Hoy estoy de buen humor, señor, pero no lo suficiente como para diarme engañar de esa manera. See, now that's a deal I can take. You speak Spanish rather well. My family had holdings in Andalusia is all. <clears throat> I'd have sent Mousqueton for this, but he knows he gets my hand-me-downs and he would have bought what he wants to wear. Anyway, what were you saying? Ah, yes, you're lackey. We shall find one right after we make a few more stops. No, we're not interested. Quite enough feathers in our cap already. <clears throat> you wish to see me, Monsieur de Treville? I did. Uh, why me alone? Because I trust you. Do you? Athos, this isn't time for humour. What's wrong? Listen, Athos. If something is the matter, surely Aramis and Porthos... What I'm about to tell you cannot leave this room. You must not discuss this with anyone under any circumstances. Not even with your friends. No, especially not with your friends. What is the matter? We have a spy within the Musketeers. Porthos, you have to hide me. Is it the Cardinal's guards? 
Where are they? Worse, it's Constance. Constance? Oh, Constance. <laughs> Which one is she? The one in the yellow headdress? I'm not a child. That blonde, maybe. This game won't work on me. Or perhaps the one with the lace. This is stupid. Or maybe it's that pretty one in the blue dress with the dark hair. Aha! Porthos, please. Her hands. <laughs> Come now, D'Artagnan. It is my duty as a friend to aid you in all pursuits. I'll wingman you. I don't want to be wingmanned. Also, what's a wingman? No clue. It sounded right, though. You have to go talk to her. It's just a crush. If I ignore it, it'll go away. It'll go away like every other crush I've ever had. Now, now. It's unhealthy to bottle your emotions up like that. Like too fizzy champagne. You'll explode everywhere and make a terrible mess. Your cork might even take someone's eye out, metaphorically speaking. D'Artagnan? D'Artagnan. Come out from behind that. No. D'Artagnan. It's lace. I can see straight through it. D'Artagnan. Why am I not surprised to find you two here? Aramis! I have a perfectly good reason to be here. Uh, my duchess wished me to adorn myself with something a little more extravagant. And who am I to refuse such a powerful, beautiful and wealthy woman? And yourself? I? I am here on an errand for one of my friends. She desired trimmings of lace. Oh, and which lovely friend would that be? No, oh, I have so many close friends that I've quite forgotten whom it is for specifically. Yeah, I'll, I'll just take these. Thank you. Now, my dearest Porthos, I'm very much in a hurry. I have my breviary to repeat and then some verses to compose, which Madame d'Aguillon begged of me. Then I must go to St. Rue d'Iona in order to purchase some rouge for Madame de Chirousse. Do pass on my regards to D'Artagnan. Huh? D'Artagnan? But he's... Oh, D'Artagnan? But he was here just a moment ago. Au revoir. Blast it all. D'Artagnan. My D'Artagnan. Is that you sandwiched between those two Persian rugs? Uh... Constance! Yes, uh, I was sampling these carpets. I simply cannot choose which to buy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this priceless rug will be indispensable to your leaky attic room. Perhaps I shouldn't get one after all. Dear Constance, <laughs> thank you for talking me out of a financial deal. I would have regretted the rest of my life. A pleasure. You know, I did not expect to see you here. But Monsieur, I work here. Ah, really? I pick your fabrics or wardrobes. Forty yards of the dark green, please. Yes, to the same address. For the wardrobes of whom, one wonders? That is a lot of fine silk. Ah, one may wonder all they like and still never know. I shall be needing your supply of the gold and silver fret. Do you know when that will next come through? Well, if you don't know, then perhaps I shall have to visit the stall next door. I, I'm Constance. I've been meaning to ask you. Today I am to engage a lackey, and wish to know if there would be any problem with him occupying the garret with me. Hmm. I don't see why not. Ah, perfect. This shade will suit my mistress nicely. Get me several samples to see if she finds a texture to her liking. Yes, just in the basket, please. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't ask you what you were doing here. Why, do I not blend in? Not with that sword, you don't. Some friends of mine are buying some new clothes. And that is how you spend your free time? 
Well, I enjoy fencing and walking through the gardens nearby. Some of them are almost as wild as the forest back home. And you? Work keeps me busy, but I do enjoy riding and reading, and I dance. You dance? Only well enough to know that you don't. <laughs> you looked rather funny yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it in a bad way. Perhaps sometime. Yes? Oh, nothing. <clears throat> Here, let me carry your basket while you look around. No, no, I insist. <laughs> my, my, are you bringing bricks back to your mistress as well? Or is it simply heavy cloth is just fashionable at the moment? <laughs> So, where do you go riding? Ah, sometime my mistress takes me on trips to the country. Versailles, Lyons, Tours, the like. Up and down France? Sounds like a real campaign. Sometimes it feels that way as well. My mistress is not much liked and she has enemies on all sides. Why, if I could walk into the Palais Cardinal this instant, I would give his eminence such a telling off that his ears would go even redder than his robes. <laughs> well, it seems we have that in common, then. Ah, did you manage to become a musketeer in the end, then? No, I'm with the company of Dessessart for the time being. Dessessart? Isn't that the one with the lieutenant who's a woman? Mon Dieu! You know Francoise? But how? Oh, one here sings at court, even when one is a servant. Madame, just who is your mistress? With a question like that, I might have thought you were an agent of his eminence. You might have thought? But the Cardinal's people ask a great deal more tact. Are you saying I have no tact? Oh, D'Artagnan, I would never say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Ah, here is my carriage. Basket, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Perhaps we shall meet again. Squashed between two carpets. Au revoir. You still haven't answered my question, Constance. Adieu, D'Artagnan. <sighs> D'Artagnan, at last! Where have you been? And who was that in the carriage? Was it... <laughs> Aramis owes me a half pistole. Aramis is here. Bah! No. I had to dash off to purchase some rouge to send to Madame de Chevreuse. Madame de Chevreuse? The Madame de Chevreuse? And Aramis, are they...? <laughs> One is never sure when it comes to Aramis. He's always all... Oh no. I'm acquainted with one of the Duchess's maids, and as Madame cannot find any such luxuries in Tor, I am merely doing my gentlemanly duty in procuring them. No, no, I would never assume to meddle with the politics of the realm. My name is Aramis, and I will make a good little abbé. You fell flat on the last one. Even Aramis would have fallen flat. Anyway, before he left, he gave me a brilliant idea, which I shall claim as my own. Tonight, we gather at Athos's place and show off our lackeys to see whose is the best. Most amusing, but that would be unfair, considering that as of now I still have no lackey. Oh, I wouldn't be getting your hopes up. None of your lackeys stand a chance against my mousqueton. He is, like myself, quite simply the best. But I know just the place to find a second place lackey. What is the matter? Spy, within our ranks. How can you be sure? Last night, several important documents were stolen from this office. I regret that I must leave you all so early in the evening, but I have a rendezvous of the utmost importance. What were the contents of these papers? They were letters from Navarre detailing the situation on the border with Spain. Repeat after me. Mi aliento huele a culo de mula. Of which his eminence seemed remarkably well informed this morning. The apple never falls far from the tree. My father is a cardinalist to the core. 
Don't look so disturbed. I do not suspect Porthos or Aramis, or even D'Artagnan, in the least, but in these times, it pays to be prudent. If you did not suspect them, then they would be here. And if you do not suspect them, then I have no doubt that you will tell them. Monsieur! Athos, I've had a hard time figuring out whether you're a gentleman or not. You're at once chivalric to a fault, yet shrewd beyond your years, but I know you understand that there is a difference between doing what is right and what is easy. And which choice do you wish me to take? What is right, or what is easy? Welcome, honoured guests. Today, I am pleased to begin the very first annual Championship of Lackeys! Are we gonna have to do this every year? Of course! Will this event always take place at my house, sir? Well, it can't be at mine for reasons. Nor at mine. Constance would kill me if I had all eight of us over, and I have to admit, Monsieur Athos, your home is as grand as it is large. It definitely lends the championship legitimacy. Now, as the host of this competition, Athos will present his lackey Grimaud first. Athos, you may begin at your leisure. Very well. Uh, this is Grimaud, as you know. The most important aspect of a lackey is obedience, and I have taught Grimaud not to speak, and to follow orders silently at the gesture of the hand. There is none more attentive and loyal than Grimaud. Grimaud, what is that you're doing with your hands? Sorry, I don't understand. Athos? We communicate this way. It has saved our lives more than once. Although, <coughs> Grimaud still has trouble sometimes comprehending the orders he has been given, and must be thoroughly schooled. There's a reason Grimaud treats Athos like a fire, with love and fear in equal measure. Aramis. <coughs> if you're both done, now let the competition begin. This is so childish. Shut up. Now, allow me to present, hailing from the estate of Porthos in Paris, France, he stands at an imposing six feet and six inches and is weighing in today at 255 pounds. He is the one, the only, the outstanding Mousqueton! Legally, her name is Boniface, which apparently means do a good in Latin. Ask anyone back home in Normandy though and he'll tell you I ain't ever done a shred of good. So, Monsieur Porthos and I both read the name Mousqueton. <laughs> Arrive at a masked ball with no name Mousqueton. The most important quality of a lackey is ruthlessness. The willingness to do what must be done, even when it is unsavoury. Like shoveling horse shit or emptying the chamber pots. Or slitting the throats of Porthos's enemies as they sleep, like a shadow in the night. The eastern wind in August, quiet, unassuming. It did you an instant. <clears throat> and this is my lackey, Bazan. Good evening, Monsieurs. Athos and Porthos have the wrong of it. For a man such as myself, the most important aspect of a lackey is piety. My master will someday be a bishop, you know. He allows me leisure to pursue the pious works. So long as I prepare him dinner. A righteous and generous man. Bazaar is an excellent chef, and no doubt will make an exceptional man of the cloth, but he is quite deaf and blind to fashionable society. And that leaves only yours, D'Artagnan, our newest arrival. Yes, one moment. Here, take off the towel. Yes, I know it's cold, but you could have it back once you said hello, right? Uh, Monsieurs, this is... Planchet. Uh, Planchet, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Planchet. Ugh. 
and I'm I'm from P- P- Picardy. It seems he's much of a worm as his master, or perhaps a wet rat. Aramis, you would think that, wouldn't you? But no. The reason our newest member is standing there, shivering and soaking, and ruining Athos's floor, is because he was the only one brave enough to become D'Artagnan's lackey. The Bridge Tunnel. This is the place you come to find a lackey. Nowhere better. Watch. <coughs> All right, you braggarts. Who here is looking to earn some pistoles in the service of a gentleman of quality? 30 sous per day. I say 30 sous per day. Oui, monsieur. Mm, yeah, sure. Go on, then. Uh, of course, bien sûr. Uh, and me. Excellent. All of you, line up in front of me. Porthos, what are you planning? Now, can any of you tell me how high up we are on this bridge? Uh, quite reasonably high. Six or two towards, by my reckoning. About 37 feet? One might even hazard to use a more anachronistic measurement, 11 meters. Bear that in mind. Uh, why do you ask? Everyone! Up onto the parapets! Um, I'm not sure I would feel comfortable. Oh no, How, however much you're offering, no. Onto the parapets! <laughs> we'll just be standing. <laughs> See? Not too hard. Money is money. Well, this man seems to know what he's doing. He'd make a fine employer, I'm sure. And by God, do I need the money. Porthos, what are you planning? D'Artagnan, if your friend told you to jump off a bridge, would you? Um... And that is why you would make a poor lackey. More blood! He's gonna push us off! Uh, uh, I am getting down from here. <laughs> this is clearly a blast. Is it? Uh... You want us to jump, monsieur? Of course not. A good lackey knows that sometimes to get the job done, they have to get their feet a little wet. You're insane! If I jump, I'll I'll get the job? No. Monsieur? Naturally. Well, uh, here, monsieur. Take my shoes. Catch. It's suicide. Here, I'll get down. I'll get down. Very good, young man. Uh, The job is yours. You don't have to jump. No, I have to jump. So that you know I'm I'm being serious. Now, boy, why don't you just... D'Artagnan, get in! Oh, man! D'Artagnan! Down to the banks! On it! Oh, a stug for Allah. What have I done? There he is. Ah. Oh. Is he all right? Oh, is he all right? Uh, I'm f- 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 fine. J- just wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was by far the stupidest thing I have ever seen. Ever! What's the name? Planchet. But did it get the job? Congratulations, Planchet. Meet your new master, Monsieur d'Artagnan. Uh, I. I'm not to be in your service, Monsieur. Regretfully, while my estates are grand, I fear that my household could not support two servants. <clears throat> he means he's broke. You'll be with me now. Here, take my cloak. Ah, oh, no offense, young monsieur, but 
I would not have jumped had I known it was for you. Oh. <clears throat> would you care to take that back, Aramis? Perhaps. Not a wet rat. A wet lackey. And a damn good one, too. Yes, but determination makes a good lackey, and Planchet is nothing if not determined. <clears throat> it is time for a vote. It'll be a draw. Everyone will vote for themselves. All those in favour of Bazin? Two. All those in favour of Grimaud? Hey! You can't just signal for Grimaud to raise his hand like that. That's cheating! Two in favour of Grimaud. All those in favour of Mousqueton? Planchet? You're not even going to vote for yourself? Uh, Mousqueton is Monsieur Porthos's lackey. That would make him the best, no? Planchet! Three for Mousqueton, and for Planchet, one. Uh, what did I tell you? The devastating duo of Porthos and Mousqueton returns, stronger than ever. Mousqueton, up top. Ha! Very crisp, sir. Hey, 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 Has something happened to Athos? Did I say something? Uh, no, no, nothing of the sort. Athos likes the quiet. Well... Athos is a bucket with a hole in the bottom, let out in a thunderstorm. The world rains its noise, and sometimes his bucket fills up faster than it can drain out. And so sometimes he needs to time to empty it before it overflows. Precisely. We think it's part of the reason he doesn't like you speaking, Grimaud. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Mm. Very true, Grimaud. You can tell what Grimaud is saying just from that hand gesture. Ah, you'll pick it up soon enough. You know, his house is really nice. And the Rue Ferreau is almost right next to the Hotel de Treville. Modest but grand. And well furnished. I have a garden. Nature furnishes my rooms. Maybe six months a year. But your irises and lavender are still nothing compared to that thing. Porthos. <sighs> Porthos, don't. Athos will thrash you if he sees you anywhere near it. Especially after last time. What? Is that sword over the mantelpiece supposed to be Excalibur? Well, we won't know until I pick it up and see if I'm the true king of England. <laughs> oh, come on. Just look at the embossing on the hilt. D'Artagnan, these inlays. Do you think they're sapphires? Oh, and the pommel. Don't touch it, Porthos. I'm warning you. What Athos doesn't know? Grimaud, you won't tell him, will you? Ugh, you're too good a lackey for your own good. I just wanted to look. Ugh. Jealousy is akin to suspicion when it comes to tainting one's soul. <laughs> uh. It all comes back to trust. I will not inform all my friends, Treville. As the Cardinal's trade, I did not expect it to become yours. Athos, I'm not asking you to spy, merely to be alert. Watch my hotel from your window, and mind your back. 
<laughs> Trust. All these old letters. I cannot burn you. But if I did, I may make the same mistake again. Back in the chest with you. Back under the bed. Let us pray I never see you until I am dead. Trust. Very well, Monsieur de Trivia. I will watch. And I will wait. Monsieur Athos? Mm -hmm. uh, Porthos sent me to check if you were all right. Uh, everything is fine. Uh. Athos? I'm fine, D'Artagnan. Uh, would you care for a drink? You're one of ancient nobility, aren't you? Porthos is the sword you have over the fireplaces from before Francis I. It is. If you're wondering what my real name is... I wasn't. I wasn't. I would never. The three of you have good reasons for your pseudonyms, I know. I just thought that maybe... You of all people would be able to help me, since your fine education doubtless touched on every area imaginable. With what do you require assistance? I... I don't know how to dance. You... would like me to show you... how to dance? Don't tell Porthos and Aramis, they'll laugh. And I won't. Aramis says you never laugh. Mm. Come here. Well, we can try one of the newer ones. Yep. Stand like this. Uh, the man, uh, pardon, the leader, will make a square around the follower. Just so. Wait. But you would be the leader. Uh, switch positions with me. Like this. Do not tense your ankles. And do not glide. You should float up and down. As on the crest of a wave in time with the music. Now, take my hand and mirror my movements. Uh, uh. Athos, you're hurt. It's only my shoulder. Take my hand. Bend at the knee, not the waist. The knee, D'Artagnan. Pay attention. This is not fencing. <laughs> I'm not cut out for this. You never will be unless you practice. Much better. But now your ankles are locked. One, two, three, and excellent start, Henry. Well done. Why is it so... so hard? <laughs> your form needs work. And you still stumble on the first beat, but for a beginner, I'm very impressed. Uh, thanks. But I, uh, I think I need to go get a drink now. <laughs> and naturally. I shall join you once I put this away. Huh. D'Artagnan. You move like shadows, you know that, Aramis. I am the embodiment of discretion. Good. Good. If you could let me by. As much as it pains me to admit this, D'Artagnan, I'm starting to think that Porthos was right about you all along. What? I have been in the Musketeers for three years now, and all that time I have never once seen Athos dance. Oh, you won't tell Porthos, will you? Now, now, dear D'Artagnan, what did I say? There is none more discreet than I.
We hope you've enjoyed episode 6 of The Three Musketeers. The cast in order of appearance was Alex Comeche as D'Artagnan, Peter Furbank as Aramis, Aaron Cotaguancar as Porthos, Matthew McConkie as Athos, Rob Morrissey as Treville, Olivia Adderley as Constance, Jacob Cook as Mosquiton, Arina Temi Agbajule as Bazan, Jay Figueredo as Planchet, Aramis Lam, Sam Turnbull, Emily Tarbuck, and Anthony Ford as Wannabes. The Three Musketeers was jointly directed by Nicole Boltablanco, Lauren Brewer, Sanya Saraf, and Daniel Mahala. Music created by Oli Fab. Main theme by Oli Fab and Kat Patalis. Editing was done by Ode Hoagie and Jay Figueredo. Our Foley artists were Natalia Umlianin Stone and Jay Figueredo. This show is based off Alexandra Dumas's The Three Musketeers. Scripts were written by Jay Figueredo, Matthew McConkie, Izel Ilkin Salmon, and Sam Turnbull. The producer team was Sophie Tice, Victoria Lee Barofolo, Thomas Tomlinson, and Jay Figueredo. For a full list of cast and crew, see our website. I'm Anthony Ford. Want to support the show? Come join our Patreon page at patreon.com slash duads. That's D-U-A-D-S. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So, do you like comedy? If you do, then Friday Follies might be just the feed for you. From the Mutual Audio Network, every Friday we bring you a selection of hilarious audio drama... And you can find it wherever you find your podcasts. Just search for Friday Follies, or you could subscribe to the main Mutual Audio Network feed. It's up to you. Find us there. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.